What is the role of diet in our overall health when we're looking at it through a quantum lens? Is it at the top of the list? Stay tuned to today's episode to find out more. Welcome back, my friends. My name is Sarah. I am known as Carnivore Yogi. Thank you so much for being here and clicking on today's video. Today, I brought my friend Zeb Hackett Riker onto the podcast to talk about quantum health. We talk about She Legit. We also talk a little bit about CBD. And do these things have a place when we are looking at health from a quantum lens? We kind of go all over the place in this conversation, talking about everything from deuterium depletion to the water network within the body. So lots of different things in this interview. Definitely encourage you to check out the timestamps in the information section below. If you want to surf around through any of the different topics or if one catches your attention and you want to go back and listen to it, it was a really fun conversation. Again, we really go all over the map, but a lot of people don't really understand what quantum health means. And I feel like we did a pretty good job of encapsulating that in this conversation. So again, I hope you do enjoy it. Today's episode is going to be brought to you by my two sponsors. The first one is going to be Optimal Carnivore. These are their grass-fed beef liver supplements. You can use my code carnivore uppercase Y to save 10% on these. And I also use the grass-fed organ meat complex here in our home. Again, in this episode, we do talk about supplements. I don't really consider desiccated organ meats supplements. I consider them filling in any nutritional gaps in case you don't eat organ meats, which are the most nutrient dense foods on the planet. So again, check out Optimal Carnivore if you're looking to fill in some of those nutritional gaps. Now, the second sponsor is Upgraded Formulas. They are my go-to source for magnesium as well as mineral testing. So a lot of us have mineral imbalances, which we talk about in this episode. And a hair tissue mineral analysis is a much more interesting way to catch those imbalances because it shows what happens over a 90 day period in the body rather than just what a blood test shows, which is a snapshot in time. So again, I use the upgraded formulas, hair tissue mineral analysis. I always recommend getting a consultation because those tests are a little hard to read and understand. I still cannot read them myself but they are very helpful at helping you to solve mineral imbalances and then to see if you do need something like magnesium, which I love theirs. My code there is YOGI12 or YOGI to save on any of the products on their website. Thank you again to Upgraded Formulas for sponsoring today's episode. I hope you guys enjoy it and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye. All right, guys, thank you so much for coming back and tuning into the channel. I am very excited about today's guest. His name is Zeb Hackett Riker, and I've had the pleasure of meeting him just through the quantum health community. So we're going to talk about quantum health stuff and his health journey and all kinds of stuff today. So Zeb, thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. Thanks for hosting me, Sarah. Yeah, it's exciting. It's like we were talking off uh, before we turn on the camera. It's just cool that we're getting to kind of get to know a lot of the quantum health people this way, you know? Yeah, it's fun. You know, it's, I've got a lot of good friends and stuff who are, who are on the right page, but to, to kind of get people up to speed takes hours and hours and days and weeks, months of conversation where if, if you meet someone in the quantum health space on Instagram, it's like, boom, yeah. you're already on the same level so that you can continue and, and further, I guess, progress the conversation. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's really cool. So I'm glad to bring you into the, my little niche of quantum health podcasts. <laughs> yeah. So let's just talk a little bit about your history and what got you into quantum healing and just learning about, you know, quantum biology, circadian biology. Yeah, absolutely. I, I guess my journey started uh, probably back in 2015. I mean, I was into health and working out in college, uh, you know, started hitting the gym around like 2021. 20, um, and, and that's, I guess, when I started cutting out carbs and kind of went paleo. Uh, but I really started turning on to some of the stuff around 2015. Um, I was coming out of the oil field at the time um, and was super unhealthy, you know, living and working in rig environments uh, for, for weeks or months on end, uh, working night shifts, which is the complete destruction of circadian rhythm. 
I had a terrible outcome with my skin and, you know, other things. And it, I guess, culminated, you know, I was also working out, like trying to get big. So it's like whey protein, 5,000 calories a day, terrible work environment, you know, awake all night or, you know, awake all night working and sleeping parts of the day, you know, it was just a mess. And yeah. uh, one night I woke up and like my entire left arm was asleep like completely asleep. And I was like, okay, I need to start cutting first of all, because I look, you know, we, we had our family's Christmas picture and I just like, looked like jolly Santa Claus, like 195 pounds, just jacked, but not healthy. Yeah. So, so at that point I was like, okay, cut bread, uh, cut calories, start time restricted eating and start looking into kind of what this is all about. And, uh, it, it was really interesting how it first started. Um, I've always played around with nootropics and stuff uh, for performance, always trying to optimize the mind. And uh, I don't know if, if you're familiar with or some of your listeners are familiar with modafinil, which is kind of like this hot topic in the nootropic space out on Wall Street. You know, everyone's microdosing, blah, blah, blah. But modafinil uh, is a prescription that's a prohistamine. So it's, it's, wow. I guess, typically prescribed to people with MS. Um, and I had a, I had a buddy who gave me one. He's like, try this out. This is like the next level of, of nootropics. And I took half one and broke out in hives. And I was like, huh? So I started researching it and it's like, you know, less than 1% of people will have a histamine reaction. I was like histamine reaction. Uh, so yeah. that got the ball rolling where I was like, what is histamine? how does that play into methylation? How does methylation play into everything else? So it was, it was interesting. It started with a panic attack uh, in the bathtub of me, like trying to, you know, take a hot bath and, and get this histamine reaction under control and then started researching methylation. So again, that was like 2015 um, and, and realized that, you know, methylation was essentially the root cause of all these autoimmune disorders that, you know, promote inflammation, whether it be neurological or systemic. And I, at that time was, was going through a process with my parents, uh, and, you know, especially my mom's parents, uh, where they were in, uh, memory care units. And it was just this, this terrible end of life experience that, you know, lasted 10 to 15 years with both of those grandparents. And I was like, I, I don't want my parents to have to go through that. So how can we start kind of approaching this from a functional uh, angle uh, to avoid that and to allow them to live, you know, fruitfully into retirement and, and beyond. So I uh, got into it then and then uh, transitioned, I guess, from oil into uh, commodity trading and found, you know, some of the newer markets within commodities. I was trading primarily agriculture, uh, but transitioned into hemp as it started to become popular um, and had been using CBD as part of this kind of rehabilitation process. Uh, so, you know, Do you think that can help with the uh, histamine just to, because so many of my listeners, I know we've talked about histamine a ton. Do so you mm -hmm. think CBD can be helpful for histamine? Yeah, I think I think CBD is like the band-aid that everyone needs to get things under control. So it's like if if you're super healthy, if you're at a metabolic baseline, you don't necessarily need it, but if you're anywhere off that that baseline, it's essential to kind of keep things in check. It's going to be anti-inflammatory, it's going to uh, promote endocannabinoid activity, which is really important especially for like brain health. Um so yeah, I, I would say that if if you're starting the health journey or or new to this process, it's one of the first things that you should start taking to keep the fire at bay. Um, and then you know after you're optimized, it still can be used for like neurogenesis and stuff, like I was saying with with brain health. Where when you look at the effects of 5G, when you look at the effects of extended coffee use, when you look at the uh, effects of social isolation and kind of all the things that we're seeing in our modern environment, all of them are detrimental to the hippocampus, which promotes theta activity in the brain. It's the only area of the brain that's able to build new neural pathways. So that's where all of your neurogenesis takes place. 
uh, and and uh, like decreased hippocampal size or hippocampal function directly correlates to all anxiety and depressive disorders. So we see that as kind wow. of this pandemic now, which makes sense because when you get into the science, when you get into it, everything is hitting the hippocampus. So even if, you know, if you're unhealthy, it's great from an anti-inflammatory perspective. And that's kind of been the sales pitch within the industry, anti-inflammatory, anti-inflammatory. It kind of goes over people's heads. But when you look at the ability for it to increase brain drive neurotrophic factor and augment neurogenesis by several hundred percent, I mean, you really start to appreciate the value um, as kind of a, another tool of defense to have in the in the back pocket. Yeah, I love that. I love talking about that in your journey too, because so many people just want to talk only about diet. And I'm like, you know, some, <laughs> you can't just use diet to fix everything, especially when you have methylation issues and you're struggling with such mm -hmm. a huge issue with histamine. So sorry mm -hmm. for interrupting. I just thought, yeah, no, be, I'm, and I yeah. think the, the root cause of all this stuff is methylation. And I guess to kind of briefly go over that, you got carbon with three hydrogens and it's this tiny little molecule that goes in and essentially tells everything else what to do. So we've got this gene called MTHFR, which regulates our methylation. And there's, there's two alleles and most people have a mutation in at least one of those alleles, which uh, makes for uh, inefficient, uh, inefficiency within folic acid metabolization. So it, typically the mutation is under methylation where you don't have enough of those, uh, those groups to go and plug in to tell your body to produce neurotransmitters or, hor or hormones or DNA, you know, all that stuff. So, you know, your, your metabolism starts to slow down and then blood sugar and all of the cascade effects thereafter kind of come into play. So, and that's what turns into disease. So I, I think the, the problem with methylation is not only this mutation in MTHFR, um, but the presence of heavy metals in our diet, water environment that bind to the cofactor sites that would otherwise be uptaking minerals to regulate enzymatic function to keep that pathway running at full efficiency. So when you combine a mutation with excess metals and then also a mineral deficient diet, it's just this, you know, storm from every angle that leads to metabolic imbalance. So if, if people want to target methylation or optimize that pathway, creatine is a great way to do it because uh, like 45% of your methyl groups every day go towards producing creatine. So if you can take a couple grams of creatine and essentially take the burden off that pathway, then you've got, you're freeing up 45% of the methyl groups to kind of get back to work. So creatine is a great way to do it. Um, as well as like a methylated B12, uh, if yeah. you do have that MTHFR mutation. Yeah, I rub that on my wrist every day. I have a little yeah. bit. Yeah, nice. and it does help. I can tell a big difference. You have to go slow with it. You don't want to take a bunch of, when you first start off, you got to get yourself used to it. But mm -hmm. I do feel a ton better just to put a little bit of that on my wrist. And I don't do a ton of supplements, but that's one I think is really essential because I have just one um, one copy of the MTHFR. My husband has one too. So nice. Me too. Yeah. I, I, uh, you know, and all of the, I, I'm a total biohacker. I do it old school. I don't run a ton of panels. It's kind yeah. of like self experimentation, see what happens. And then I'll run the panels and then I'll give the advice. So it's, it's, you know, it's, <laughs> I like the rush, right? So yeah. I did all this under that hypothesis. And then after the fact went and got tested and then found out I did have like a 17% inefficiency in MTHFR. My next experiment, as I've kind of gone down the last year and a half of some other things is to go and test that again, to see if the actual expression has changed. I don't know if it's possible, but I've got a theory that, that potentially it could be. Like if you like in increase your redox function and really mm -hmm. get your body working more. If I've heard that people that are under methylators, if they really get their redox function in a good place, that mm -hmm. kind of can go away for some people. Yeah, so, yeah exactly. Cause it's like, yeah. okay, your nuclear DNA is, is set. That's what's determining how, how big you are, what your facial structure is, all that stuff. But all of the DNA that has to do with metabolization is your mitochondrial DNA 
which we know is always a product of your inputs, which is light, water, food, you know, those things. So it's like, as you optimize your inputs, you're optimizing your mitochondrial DNA. And okay, maybe you had a mutation a year ago or two years ago, but you know, after you go through this process, potentially you're able to, to amend those. Yeah. And I think so many people that follow my channel that maybe just want to talk about the food thing, they do all the right stuff with the food. You know, it's like, let's do this mm -hmm. diet, this diet, and let's do it stricter and stricter and stricter, but they don't address this part of things. They don't address the quantum part of things, which is why I love bringing people like you on here to talk about these types of things, because it's so vital if you want ultimate health, if you, you know, because you're just going to have to start counting calories and eat less and less and less and less because your metabolism will slow down unless you really do try to fix your redox function. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your circadian biology, I think is, is the root of everything. And it's like, you know, getting into the diets and the protocols and the supplements is an essential thing to, to hack your way back to health. But once yes. you're either close to or at that baseline, you have to get circadian to optimize because that's our connection with earth. That's our connection with the sun. And those are the drivers that reinforce healthy melatonin production. And that to me is the root of it all. If your melatonin production is on, you're healthy. Yes. Because everyone talks about autophagy and this, I'm like, if your melatonin sucks, you're not getting mm -hmm. autophagy. Just mm -hmm. keep on fasting and blowing out your adrenals. If you're not sleeping, if you don't have good melatonin, it's not really doing everything that you think it is. Correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. So it, yeah, it, it ultimately, it comes down to the brain because the yeah. brain is what's providing the instructions and receiving the information to carry all this out. And you look at that area surrounding, you look at the limbic system, you look at the hippocampus, you look at the pituitary and the pineal gland and how important those are for getting sunlight and transmuting that into directions that lead to hormone secretion. So it's like, you've got the light, which is kind of the ethereal, the divine, I uh, call it the masculine transmuting into the physical, which is the pituitary, the hormones, the actual secretion that is life, which is maybe more of the feminine. So kind of taking a, a more esoteric examination of this and, take, and, and thinking of how the Egyptians or some of these other ancient civilizations viewed those parts of the brain as integral to maintain our connection to ourselves and our higher selves or, or the divine. And it makes sense. And it's, you know, from, from a spiritual perspective, it makes sense. But then you get into the circadian biology behind it and you realize that those are the drivers that regulate and promote balance in the system. Yeah. yeah it's so fascinating how it all fits together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's beautiful. It never gets boring. Like if no. you get, if you get into the, the circadian uh, rabbit hole, you'll never be bored again. <laughs> yeah, it's that it's true. It's just, there's always more to learn. Absolutely. Yeah. So you, I, I totally cut you off in your story about your evolution of things, but you really are for yourself. You're really focusing on the whole idea of methylation for your family, for yourself. And that kind of led you into, you know, CBD and I know Sheila Jet and all the other things that you're mm -hmm. doing. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah I, I guess uh, got into the hemp industry, uh, started producing, you know, large scale hemp extracts. Um, and because I was close to the supply, I was like, hey, I should start a retail company too. You know, didn't really focus it on it much because that wasn't my primary business um, until, you know, about the last year or so I've kind of jumped back into the brand. Um, so it, yeah, it was, it was a, the CBD or the cannabis industry uh, was, was fairly rocky and still is, um, you know, there's a lot of maybe your listeners who are familiar with that, but yeah, it, it, it was crazy. I mean, everyone was, was jumping in and investing yeah. in 2018 after the farm bill, all of the senators were promoting, you know, hemp programs for their states. And then there was this big elephant in the room, which was the FCA approval that everyone was hoping for. Oh, you know, by 2022, it's going to be a 30 billion, $50 billion market, blah, blah, blah. The FDA is going to approve it. And you're going to see 
Coca-Cola and all these large companies, including CBD. So that was kind of the, the expectation, you know, in the initial phase, 2017, 2018. And then that never came around. And a lot of the people that pushed for state hemp programs kind of turned their back on it and left, you know, millions of pounds of hemp in farmers' barns and stuff wow. where extractors were going out of business, farmers weren't able to move product. We went from a per pound price of probably around $50 in 2018 to a dollar in 2020. And then wow. by the end of it, people were giving away the hemp in order for it to you know, not be in the barn any longer. So it was wow. this huge up and down, um, partially due to the lack of approval from a regulatory standpoint. And at the same time, you see the FDA giving billions of dollars to vaccine research and right. all of this other stuff. So it's like, you know, those of us who got involved in the industry from the beginning were passionate about it because it was anti-pharma. You know, it's the right. naturopathic organic solution to a lot of things. Uh, and, and, you know, truly were involved in the industry, uh, you know, for that purpose. And then to see that go 180 degrees to, no, we're not going to help the farmers anymore. We're not going to support this industry that we've kind of hyped the last couple of years. We're going to turn around and give that money to vaccine companies. Uh, it was uh, quite disheartening. And uh, yeah, so anyways, that that's a little bit of the roller coaster that, you know, yeah. that we've gone through the last few years. But yeah, now uh, 2022, we're here. It's a brave new world. And we've got a brave new world product, which is Sheila Jeet, which uh, is awesome. It's, you know, one of the first supplements I actually started taking back in 2016 or 2017. And I, I, I knew a lot about it, but I didn't fully appreciate everything until I've learned what I have over the last couple of years where, you know, it's, it's kind of uh, to, to fully appreciate something you have to like experience and like truly know it to internalize that lesson. Right. It's, it's harder when someone's like, Hey, this is awesome. Take it. Trust yeah. me. You're like, oh, yeah. okay. But when you actually, you know, learn from trial and error and then get back to the beginning and you're like, oh my God, I knew about the supplement five years ago and here I am, we've come full circle. So yeah. it's, it's one of those, uh, one of those kind of supplements. So that's, uh, that's the latest that I'm offering yeah. right now. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about She Legit because I think a lot of people are going to, um, on this channel really are going to be like, what the heck is that? I don't think it's mm -hmm. really it's popular, I think, more with the quantum health people, <laughs> but it's not really mainstream yet. So I kind of consider it a quantum health supplement. Honestly, mm -hmm. I don't, I, like I said, I try not to take a lot of supplements. I take organ meat capsules and I've been ostracized on YouTube. Oh, don't quit pushing supplements. I'm like, <laughs> really, dude, for pushing organ meat capsules. Okay. <laughs> Um, why don't you just go to another channel? Cause yeah, I'm no, not going to see eye to eye on a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> but let's, let's talk a little bit about Sheila Jet Cause I think some people just have no idea what it even is. Okay. So Sheila Jeet, uh, is Sanskrit for conqueror of mountains. It's like the oldest supplement. I think, uh, to that, that any civilization has used. It's like the first Ayurvedic supplement. So this is going back thousands and thousands of years. Um, essentially it's uh, like, it's a, it's a thick oil resin that exists in the earth's crust, but it's been forced up and is found in mountain ranges. So it's in the Himalayas, it's in the Andes, it's some places in the Rockies. Um, and then mine is from the Altai mountains in Russia. Uh, and it's just broken down plant and animal matter that's been concentrated, compacted through heat and time to form like this resin. So the resin uh, is super rich in trace minerals. So that's the, the big perk is you're getting all of your trace minerals, like 85 trace minerals. So your potassium, magnesium, big ones like that, that were, you know, copper that we're familiar with, but then also smaller ones like selenium and boron and those tiny, you know, you don't need a lot of them, but they're essential for some of this stuff like thyroid health. So it's, it's got a full range of the trace minerals that you need 
and here's the quantum part of it in naturally occurring proportions because it's broken down plant and animal matter it's not going to be like an isolated supplement where you're taking you know a thousand times of the daily minimum requirement you know this is going to be kind of a full spectrum proportional breakdown of that so it essentially mimics what our soil health should look like you know before it's been stripped of all this stuff um, so the trace minerals super important. The other big thing is the fulvic acid content. So because of the soil, it's got a, a large amount of fulvic and humic acids. Fulvic acid actually chelates heavy metals. So it, it binds to things like mercury and cadmium and aluminum. You know, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but those are the main things that disrupt metabolic performance and lead to toxicity to some extent. So if that, if you ingest that fulvic acid, it's pulling and grabbing metals from your system and replacing it with the minerals that are supposed to be at those cofactor binding sites. So you're kind of jump starting the metabolism. If you're, if you're pulling the metals and you're adding the minerals, you're speeding things up. So those are the two main reasons that it's good. And then the third, which is another kind of quantum aspect is the C60 content, uh, which is carbon 60. So if, if you've heard of graphene's all the rage these days, uh, well, graphene is a 2D single ply chain of carbon atoms. Uh, the C60 is a dodecahedral form, so like a soccer ball in its 3D. So it's, uh, it's probably, I think it's the, the most powerful antioxidant. So it's uh, a, a free radical scavenger, it's an electron donor, so it can actually give electrons uh, to electron uh, transport chain to increase ATP production. So it is a form of like free energy. Um, so you're able to neutralize free radicals while essentially driving mitochondrial performance at the same time. And that's from, you know, not from a caloric source, just from an energy standpoint. Uh, so that's, yeah, if, if you're going through any sort of disease or inflammatory or anything like that, if you can target mitochondrial efficiency, that's the number one thing to do in those situations. You can do it with carbon 60. Um, so yeah, huge, huge anti-aging benefits. And not just, not just anti-aging, but like age reversing benefits where, you know, you're promoting youth as compared to just delaying the inevitable. Yeah. And the, the thing you say about the heavy metals, I mean, what percentage of people would you say really are heavy metal, metal toxic in the U S? Uh, it's a scary number. I mean, yeah. it starts <laughs> with vaccines where, you know, these yep. aluminum and mercury adjuvants are used to help carry it into cells. I think it's a load of BS. Um, I think it's essentially targeting, uh, meta metabolism from the get-go. And that's why we see the huge uptick in autism and behavioral disorders is because right off the bat, kids aren't able to process what's going in their body. Um, so that's, that's one thing. And then you look at what's in the air and what's in the water. Those two other things, I mean, this stuff accumulates. Um, and the food so, too, it's like, yeah, the, the food too, especially yeah. if you're eating conventional Lots of food. vegetables. Yeah. 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 So how many people I would say most people are, you know, if you're, yeah. if you're overweight to any extent, you're most likely metal toxic. Um, and I, you know, think that, you know, when, when you're looking, especially at the older generation right now, you know, the younger generation, it's autism and ADHD and all that stuff will now look at the prevalence of dementia and yeah. Alzheimer's and stuff. Mm -hmm that again is the hippocampus and these metals, primarily aluminum, that's the first place they go. So aluminum, when it crosses the blood brain barrier, goes straight to the hippocampus, reduces gray matter there, reduces theta wave activity and promotes dementia and Alzheimer's like effects, which is essentially the inability to store and process short-term memory and convert it to long-term. So it's, I mean, it's, you can say all this is due to ignorance, but it's like, I mean, when, when you see how a lot of these work and how they work in combination with other things like glyphosate, which helps shuttle aluminum across the blood brain barrier, yeah. you start to ask some questions. Um, so yeah, I, I think most people, if you're, if you're not cognizant of this stuff and you're not taking action, 
you're probably metal toxic to some degree. If you're younger, if you're skinnier, you know, those effects aren't really realizing yet. Um, but it adds up, it adds up over time. And I guess to give you kind of an, an anecdotal piece, you know, my dad is 70 years old, has had terrible allergies entire life. Um, symptoms that, you know, some skin stuff that started symptoms that now knowing this, I'm like, that's, that's metal toxicity. Well, we got him on uh, the Andy Cutler protocol, which is a combination of DMSA and R lipoic acid, which are both sulfur-based amino acids. Uh, you cycle them on their half-life, four days on, 11 days off, gradually increasing the dosage over a six-month, year-long period, however long you need to be chelating. So we did that uh, for about a year, no more allergies. So this is someone who's you know 70 years old. That's a lifetime of metal accumulation where even in a, in a few months, you can start to see some major improvement. Um, and that's talking to family, friends, and, uh, and family who aren't really open to, to this kind of approach to medicine or biology, very traditional thinkers who are going through some pretty severe health crises. Um, you know, I can, I can see it. Uh, you know, we've got a family friend who's got late stage MS. And I think that is is a hundred percent related to metal toxicity and a lot of these people have fillings or multiple fillings so it's like if if you're even thinking of needing to chelate or starting this process the first thing to do is ask yourself hey do i have dental fillings do i have dental implants what's going on in my mouth because all that needs to come out yeah absolutely and so many people do like we've just mm -hmm. switched to a holistic dentist i'm lucky i've never Ha really had to do a ton of dental work except in my vegan years mm -hmm. um <laughs> but nothing nothing major um and i don't think people really understand kind of the harms of of some of that stuff you know and just even using a ton of fluoride you know toothpaste and mouthwash and it's like and it's in the water it's everywhere you know yeah yeah fluoride i mean it's it's not a metal but like talking about it's the exact accomplishes the exact same thing yeah. you know as far as calcification of the pineal gland um and i was doing some research rather actually rather recently on it um just because i'm you know learning about fulvic acid and and how it's you know gets rid of this stuff but i came across a study and uh fluoride actually speeds up the onset of puberty by, disru really? by disrupting melatonin function. So it, it targets the pineal gland, calcifies the pineal gland. Um, and I think the reason that kids are going through dental fluoride dental treatments at such young ages is essentially to right off the bat, disrupt that melatonin. And, and the author of the study, you know, kind of went on to speculate as to whether or not we're actually fully able to evolve if we're disrupting melatonin where we know melatonin is this circadian uh, light sensitive kind of time molecule where you know if if it's disrupted at an early age and it functions to kind of like biologically time your evolution then what happens if you're disrupting that before say a child has evolved to the point that they're supposed to so yeah, childhood uh, fluoride treatments. I went through them. Yep, you know, I did too. Yep. You know, it's it's a crime in my opinion. Yeah, we've actually never done one on my daughter. That's amazing. <laughs> That's, yeah, with all the other issues that she's had, like she actually didn't go into puberty really until she was 13. So I mm -hmm. was like, okay, <laughs> I have done something right <laughs> because yeah. all of her friends were like nine, you know, eight and nine years old. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't even imagine mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. It's very common now. Well, props to you on that. Yeah. Thank it's, you. it's, it's crazy how the mouth, uh, kind of relates to the heart and relates to the brain. It's, you know, it's where we, everything enters our body in the mouth and it's the yeah. easiest way to pass into our bloodstream a lot of the time. So yeah, dental products, you know, if you're, if you're watching what you eat, watch what kind of dental products, watch anything that you're putting in your body. Yeah. That's kind of the rabbit hole that, you know, led me into quantum was just, I had gotten so particular about the foods and like learning about glyphosate and learning about, you know, where to source my food and all of that. And then I still was not 
getting the results I wanted with my health. I was still mm -hmm. experiencing a lot of stuff that I was like, this sucks. And so, yeah, we have to pay attention to that, but it's like opening up this rabbit hole. And then all of a sudden you're like getting rid of all the plastic in your house and like, you know, mm -hmm. all your beauty products are just, you know, not really that uh, high end anymore, but you just kind of figure things out. You do a lot of things differently. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. There's a, an, actually a friend sent me a pretty interesting article um, and it has to do with detox and chelation. And, you know, we, we talked about Sheila G and DMSA mm -hmm. and these protocols that they definitely take some discipline. They take yeah. some action. It, you know, takes a, a while sometimes to realize results. Well, my friend sent me uh, uh, an article that was written in the 13D newsletter, uh, which is actually, it's like this elite financial newsletter that Wall Street firms will subscribe to. They'll get, you know, seven, 10 editions for a $300,000 subscription fee. It's like that kind of level. So, that, you know, this guy is, is kind of in the know when it comes to a lot of stuff. And this article in particular was about a Swiss clinic that offers a type of apheresis, which is um, kind of like blood exchange. It's this uh. unit called inuspheresis, inus and it's a double membrane, I guess, pretty similar to a dialysis unit that's pulling blood out of your body and passing it through a double membrane filter so that they're pulling all of the heavy metals and stuff from your body. And it's not just uh, metals, it's glyphosate and microplastics and like, you know, foreign proteins, it's getting everything and it's a three hour treatment. So it's, it's, I mean, it's super cost prohibitive. It's like 3,200 bucks a treatment and you have to go to Switzerland, but essentially you're getting what could be months or years of detox or chelation in a two day session where you're, you're going in for the first day, it's about two, two and a half hours. And then you have a day of recovery where you have the clean blood kind of cycling back through your body and picking up the additional, you know, contaminants and then another cycle. So you, you get like 70, 80% of the stuff you want to get out, out the first day. And then you go back two days later and get the second piece to it. So if there's people out there who are in like a really acute situation or have the money and resources to kind of nip this in the bud quickly. Uh, yeah, it's called double membrane apheresis. Uh, I know the, the one unit is in use phoresis. Um, that's a great way to target some of the stuff. Interesting. I did the IV irrigation where they, they take my blood out and put it under a UV light and then put it back in. Nice. Yeah. I did that last year too on all my, nice. crazy, <laughs> all my crazy stuff that I was trying. Yeah. yeah and, and of course the FDA doesn't approve it. Oh, hell no. You know, no, definitely you not. No. <laughs> I no. mean, you can get, uh, you can get a plasma phoresis in the United States, which is spinning out your plasma, but then you're getting donor plasma rather than your own plasma back. And it's like, God knows who your donor was. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It's and you don't know what's in that plasma either. So it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'd love to know, just kind of jumping a little bit, kind of your thoughts on where diet really fits in. Cause we've talked a lot about different quantum things that you've done and kind of what's been your journey with, with food. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's almost more complicated than asking about all my relationships. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, actually. <laughs> uh, so I guess, um, yeah, 2012, 2011, cut out bread, went paleo. That's when I really started kind of going low carb. And thank God I started that young. I, I was at 20, 21 years old. Yeah. Um, that can you know, that it wasn't super regimented or strict, um, but I did that for several years and then firmly cut out gluten for the first time in 2017. Um, actually, no, that was that was 2016, cut out gluten in 2016. Um, and then in 2017, went keto for the first time, uh, did keto for a while, uh, ultimately did carnivore after keto. So that was 2018. Um, and then I decided to flip and try the other end of the spectrum and went Repeat. vegan for <laughs> oh, a year. Shoot. So you went but, vegan after carnivore. Yeah, I never well, hear carnivore, that. 
carnivore, then vegan. Uh, and for about a three month period during vegan, I went fruitarian only fruit. Uh, and then went back to kind of like an adapted keto where, you know, it's, it's primarily meat or seafood, um, very little vegetables, occasional fruit, um, and lots of raw dairy. So it's, I've kind of tried it all out. Um, and there's benefits to all of it. I think, you know, there's a lot of hate on veganism. There's a lot of hate on carnivore. It's obviously the two, two extremes. Um, carnivore, you know, I think is essential for anyone that's not healthy. If you're not healthy, if you're not metabolically healthy, go carnivore because carnivore is nutrient dense and that animals done all the work to assemble the nutrients for you to get it in a nice consumable bioavailable form, like boom, it's the shortcut. When you're trying to drive energy from fruits and vegetables and stuff, you need to be healthy. You need to be extremely healthy and you need to be grounded and getting sunlight and be in like a truly circadian uh, biology, which is not just on like a day-to-day basis, but on a seasonal basis. So if you're thinking of eating fruits and vegetables, it's all got to be seasonal. It's all got to be local because when it comes down to it, the spin state of the hydrogen within those foods is completely linked into the sun and you want to be eating that information that's local to you because that's the information that the rest of your body has been getting for the course of the year. So yeah, with with carnivore, if you're sick, if you're trying to rehabilitate, that's the answer. Um, And then certainly if performance is your goal, if you want to be in the body, if you want to put on muscle, if you want to increase, you know, all of this good stuff, that's the way to do it. Um, So that's the benefits of carnivore. The, you know, I I think certain people, I think you can work your way up to veganism because it essentially has to do with how efficient the energy assembly process in your body is where you don't look at a fruit as, you know, vitamins and minerals and, and say, Hey, this is this much protein, blah, blah, blah. You're looking at it as information from your environment. So it's like, you know, look at a fruit as like a Wikipedia page almost (laughs) where (laughs) where if, if you're assembling information, I think there's something at a higher level that you're ingesting that there's this almost alchemical process in the body that turns that into energy that can be used. Because when you, when you look at shilajit or you look at things like methylene blue, um, it all comes down to electron transport. Um, you know, if you're familiar with deuterium depletion, that's the whole point is to shrink the mitochondrial size to increase electron transport. So at the basis of it, if, if you're deuterium depleted, if you're outside, if you're getting sunlight and you're getting water, that's got correct mineral content so that it's ionized. Technically, I think we could potentially live off of that where sunlight is the main driver for a, a redox free energy. So I think like in, if you're in a equatorial zone, living in a hut grounded 24, seven, 365, you can be vegan, no problem. But that gets a little bit difficult when you're in Northern Minnesota working an office job under blue lights and you haven't set yeah. foot on the ground or gotten sunlight for six months, you know? Yeah. So it's this, it's this back and forth where if, if you are going vegan, you need to be very careful about not only what health state you're in, but uh, your, your circadian timing. And then, yeah, everyone else should probably be closer to carnivore until you're at a metabolic baseline. Yeah. I feel like so many people really just blame the diet for everything. And then, cause I had a, a bunch of my group members, they wanted me to dissect this video of this girl saying that keto had ruined her thyroid. And they were like, Mm -hmm. watch it and tell me what you think. And I'm like, First of all, what I'm going to tell you, what I think, if anyone says a diet ruins whatever, I'm going to ask them, do they ever see sunrise? Are they going outside? Mm-hmm. When was the last time that they, you know, were outdoors instead of in front of their phone or their computer all the time? If she's a YouTuber, likely because I am one too, 
Mm -hmm. you're doing a lot of screen time. You have to balance that out. So for this, after I'm off of here with you, I will go outside and probably walk for two hours because it's a beautiful sunny day. Like <laughs> on tank top, shorts, walk, even though it's like 60 degrees, it's like, that's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, because I have to balance this out. I see the importance of that. And so I get very, you know, I just get very like frustrated when people are just constantly point the finger at this diet, the carnivore ruined my life or keto ruined my life or even veganism. You know, yeah, I was vegan and I had a shit ton of health problems, but I was also teaching inside of a yoga studio all day. You know, mm -hmm. I never, I didn't start seeing sunrise until just the last couple of years until it was like, this is actually a health thing that I have to be doing this. So mm -hmm. It's always interesting to hear people's kind of journeys with diet. And I, I probably, if you, if we'd had this conversation a year ago and you talked about vegan, I would have been like, oh my God, I can't. But now, I mean, I know, um, Matt Maruka, he doesn't really talk about the fact that he's been vegetarian for a while, but mm -hmm. yeah, he was just super, you know, he's living in Costa Rica right now. He's out underneath the sun. He's like barefoot all the time. So I think he can get away with that. Um, and, and he's er, young. <laughs> the other question is, is he eating fish? Um, I don't think so. It really, so he's, yeah. he's not even eating fish. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Wow. Well, I think, I mean, when I was in Costa Rica, it's definitely an easy place to be vegan. Yeah. You know, you're outside, you're grounded, you're in the jungle, you're in such an electrical environment. You're like on the where, equator. Yeah. Yeah. You could, you could probably be drinking spring water for like three weeks and not even be hungry. That's right. Like, that's what Costa Rica is. Yeah. That's what he talks about the, the light diet, you know, he's yeah. like living off of light and electrons from the earth. <laughs> right. Yeah. But I mean, the second that you want to venture into like the, the wilds of the North to like, you know, if you're, if you were one of the French Canadian explorers looking for beaver pelts and gold and stuff like that, you know, you're not going to be running off of oranges. I'll tell you no. that. You're no. be hunting and killing the things that are around you, which there's not much, you know, you're, you're lucky to get the, uh, the white hair if you can even catch it, which, which brings up, you know, going back to deuterium depletion, um, the main scientist who's done a lot of that work, I've, I always forget his name. Laszlo Boros. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's the guy uh, as you know, his theory is that basically we evolved or the, the, you know, our ancestors that did evolve the quickest were actually scavengers and were primarily gathering bone marrow from already killed animals because you're not putting yourself at risk in the fight. To, to kill the animal and you're not expending the calories. You're essentially just roaming around, hanging out, you find a carcass and then you get all the bone marrow and the bone marrow is the most nutrient dense, the highest concentration of fat and it's deuterium depleted because right. it's in the bone. It's, there's no possibility of any sort of like bacterial overgrowth. So he's like, that's the superfood. And, you know, in our, in our natural state, we should probably only be eating raw bone marrow from scavenge carcasses yeah so at some point in my health evolution i i'll say it now i will commit to doing that where okay i will like strand myself <laughs> in northern minnesota in the cabin and live off of like moose carcass for three months or so i'll do it <laughs> i'll be following you for that one i'll, I'll let you try that one out <laughs> and then uh john krakauer whoever wrote into the wild can can document my demise <laughs> I mean, I love bone marrow. I everyone thinks I'm insane because I keep it in the freezer. I'll buy like the big femur bones and then I'll just scoop it out. And to me, since I don't really eat a ton of sugar, it tastes kind of like sweet. It's like the I, oh, yeah. I call it carnivore ice cream. Yeah, it's, it's just sweet. Yeah, it's delicious. But I can <laughs> I gotta interview Laszlo one of these days. Um, yeah, he's an interesting dude. He's there. got a mind. He has a mind for sure because he takes all of this. And then he, he also applies spirituality. Where, yeah. He talks about the Bible I've, and I've yeah. heard him comparing Eve biting the forbidden fruit as literally the introduction of deuterium to the divide, to the diet. And that's what, you know, the fall of man was responsible uh, or a cause of Yeah, I'm like, wow, dude, that's, that's some powerful that's stuff. Deep. Yeah. Um, what's his name? Robert, um, 
Slovak, I think he's mm-hmm. one of the light water guys and he's just the water guy, period. I've been trying to get him on my show for a while, but he had some interesting um, talks about how they mentioned deuterium in the Bible a whole bunch. And mm-hmm. uh, it, yeah, it's a very fascinating topic. And I did deuterium depletion. And I, I honestly, when I was drinking that water, I woke up on like day 21 and was like, whoa, you know, like I wanted to go walk five miles. I was literally getting up walking because I would just go sit outside for sunrise. But as soon as it kicked in, I had to be walking with sunrise. Like Mm -hmm. I was hitting like 20, 25,000 steps a day. I was just like so much freaking energy. Um, I didn't want to go off of it, but I was advised by Carrie and Corey. They're like, you need to, you don't want to be on that all the time because you just go on it like once a year. <laughs> Don't stay so, on it all the time. So were you fully carnivore and on deuterium depleted at that time? Yeah. And and you started, how long did you, or did it take you to start feeling effects? Three weeks. It was Three literally weeks. like okay. day 21 that I woke up and I had so much energy and the, I, I was, a, I was eating so much and like losing weight. Mm-hmm. I was, it was crazy because I had been trying to kind of watch and say, all right, you know, I'm trying to fix my redox function. I don't want to gain a bunch of weight. I want to just stay this size. And so I was kind of tracking what I was eating and I was probably eating like around 1800 calories a day. And I was like, that's cool. You know, that's, I'm not, I'm still kind of losing a little bit of weight, but I was trying to do that. Once I hit that week three, I could Mm -hmm. not, I was trying, I had to eat like 2,500 calories a day just to maintain my weight. It was like, I had to quit tracking. Wow. So I was just like, this wow. is going to drive me crazy. Yeah, it was nuts. And I, like I said, I didn't want to go off. Of it, but I'd be yeah. interested to check that out, you know, cause so what, if, if you have natural spring water, like straight out of the ground, it's deuterium depleted, but like, yes. as it continues along the, I guess the, the supply chain, it's, I guess, corrupted or more yeah. deuterium becomes incorporated. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's different ones. I think like Avion has maybe like 139 parts per million. They they had it on the I feel like it's on the Lightwater website, but it's such a it's a fascinating topic. Water is just a fascinating topic to me, and that's like yeah. I mean, that goes back to the whole heavy metal thing because I think that people they really don't understand like what they're actually drinking. I mean, we get water, spring water and glass delivered to the house and it's an expense. But for me, I feel like it's for the health of my family because we live in the city of Atlanta. I'm like, do not go near the tap water. There's filters on all the showers and tubs. Like I Mm -hmm. will not let that stuff come in contact with my family because it's, Mm -hmm. yeah, I talk about heavy metal and, and putting God knows what into your system. Yeah. And it it does come down to the water because, you know, a lot of the metals when they pass the blood brain barrier or not even when you're talking about the pineal gland doesn't have to cross the blood brain barrier. You're, you're basically shutting down the nervous system. So it's becoming less sensitive and the nervous system is what's responsible for structuring your body's water. So if we've heard about exclusion zone water, uh, and your fascia and the ability for the fascia to hold that negative charge to structure exclusion zone water. Well, all of that starts to break down when you don't have nervous system function. So yeah, within the brain metals that decrease, uh, especially the hippocampus activity. Um, and then like glyphosate, you know, we talked about that helping it helps shuttle aluminum, aluminum across the blood brain barrier. But the other bad thing is it's the, you know, it's the main component of collagen. So if your fascia is your collagen network, uh, glyphosate displaces glycine. So it's actually incorporated, uh, glyphosate's incorporated in the collagen structure, which uh, decreases its ability to hold a negative charge. So it's helping aluminum go to the brain and then it's basically breaking down the electrical potential of your fascia. So it's hitting your nervous system from both angles so that you have a a lower ability to structure exclusion zone water, which, you know, talking about uh, from a free energy standpoint, it's one thing, but from uh, kind of an unconscious information flow, it's another thing where the crystal patterns within our structured water you know, give us unconscious information, you know, when, when someone walks in the room and they've got a good vibe or you, you know, you feel good, that's them, their heart and that electromagnetic impact changing the structure of your exclusions on water. So 
it can be in a good way with, you know, someone walking in the room or it can be in a bad way when you're in a, you know, an apartment downtown Nashville, which is where I am right now getting hit with 5G, 30 Wi-Fi signals, uh, Bluetooth, you name it. What does that do to that information network? Yeah. Um, So yeah, if, you know, that, that's why I've got this on, this is a 5g hoodie. So okay. is, uh, from primal hacker, but okay. yeah, hopefully it keeps me protected to some degree because that exclusion zone, that's your soul from my yeah. perspective. I agree. And I was just talking about somebody who doesn't understand quantum health about this. She is a, um, psychiatrist and she, well, she's actually a psychotherapist, but we were just talking about mental health. And she said, you know, you have to mind your environment of like, who's in your environment, once you're listening to, Mm you know, what is going on in your environment, because it does really affect your mental health. And that's when I was like, oh yeah, let's talk about the water network in the body. And (laughs) like, Mm -hmm. I took the conversation like super nerdy because I think people will just turn on the TV or just turn on the news and turn on that crap. Number one, you're getting all that EMF from that device, but also like the information that's coming at you exactly is changing literally the water network in your body. And you wonder why you feel like crap. You wonder why you're depressed, why you're anxious, why you're sad, because you're Mm -hmm. allowing all that energy to penetrate into your body. And it's, people don't understand that. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I think nowadays, a lot of other people have been kind of caught up in the whole thing where a person's another Wi-Fi router. If, if they're programmed negatively that's just another wi-fi signal that's hitting you and like a perfect example of this you know i was working the other night and it was in the conference room and you know it was at 66 degrees i like to keep it rather chilly normal because it's good for your blood sugar yeah me too my house is, at. i woke up this morning and it was 62 i was like oops i didn't mean to keep it that low yeah so, so anyways, I'm in there working and, and this lady comes in and, oh my God, it's so cold. Just oh, shouting, geez. goes over to the thermostat, turns it up to 80. Oh <laughs> and I, was my like, God, no. I was like, Hey, I'll compromise at 70. Yeah. And you know, she just went off and it was like that feeling like from a, from a structured water standpoint, my heart beat went yes. up like, who is this little evil wi-fi router <laughs> shouting at me trying to turn the temperature up to 80 <laughs> <laughs> it's true i mean you know i had a good friend of mine and she was just so negative all the time and she never said anything to me like she was never mean to me but she always was negative about other people and i've had a few friends like that over in, in 2021 that i just like let go of before mm-hmm. the end of the year because i was like I've been working on my health really hardcore. And I realized that at the end of last year, I was like, I have to let go of these friendships because they're all they're doing is talking negatively about other people. They're Mm -hmm. mean to other people. And I can't allow that energy into my life because it is affecting my health, you Mm -hmm. know? And then it's like, once I kind of let go of a lot of those relationships, I finally had a health breakthrough breakthrough, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And I don't think people really think about that as much as they really should. Yeah. 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 The, the people you surround yourself with are, are crucial. Um, mm-hmm. it's, it's not just from like a positive negative standpoint, but even from just like a, a normalization of, of your interpretation of what is normal. So, right. you know, people who are trying to get healthy that maybe are cutting out drinking or who want to go to bed earlier, or who want to do these things that are kind of like, you know, social faux pas, like, Oh, you know, why aren't you having a drink? It's like, okay you're my friend, we're cool, but like, you also need to accept the fact that I don't want to drink, you know, right. I don't, I don't want to eat a dessert or I don't want to yeah. stay out till midnight. You know, I like you as a person, but at the same time, like, come on, it's 2022, get on right. this page. This is the page to be on, you know, right. it's, it's a lot, it's, we've got an uphill battle from here. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's going to be getting easier. No, it's like, we go to bed at nine here. We don't turn on the Wi-Fi. Yeah. <laughs> like there's certain things that we do here and yeah, that's just how it is. Like I, I kind of set the tone for the house and they may like fight back a little bit, but that's all right. Now everyone does it and everyone's healthier for it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and once you do it and you feel healthy, then you see it and you understand it. And it's, you've gone through the process of it where it's like, until you actually feel the effects of implementing this stuff, 
right you can have people tell it to you all day but when you feel it then you know it and you're like oh yeah this is obvious yeah yeah i mean i told this story uh to someone else the other day it was my husband's birthday was on friday and he was like i want to get barbecue and da 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 and all this stuff and i was like cool i'll get brisket without the sauce or whatever and i'll mm-hmm. enjoy that and then he called me in the afternoon he's like you know what i want to go get that really good wild um king salmon and have you just cook that in the oven and just do a really simple healthy dinner here because i just realized i don't want to feel bad on my birthday and i was like whoa (laughs) (laughs) this is crazy are you serious (laughs) so it it does wear off on the people that we love if we Mm -hmm. kind of live by example you know and Mm -hmm. you do get to that point where you're like yeah the cake and ice cream sounds really good but then how am I going to feel tomorrow? Do I want to waste the day tomorrow feeling depressed or like crap? You know, yeah. that's yeah. the, that's the ultimate thing is, is time. Time's the yeah. most valued commodity. And the time that I don't feel good yeah. from a cost benefit standpoint, isn't worth not feeling my best. And, right. you know, people are like, Oh, just have the piece of cake. Well, you don't understand the more optimized you are, the more that piece of cake hits you. Like yeah, I'm like a Ferrari <laughs> running on high octane. Like you put ethanol in my system And it's not going to be good for the engine. So I take that cake. I mean, I'm going to have messed up sleep. I'm going to wake Mm -hmm. up. My eyes are going to be swollen shut. I'm going to feel like I had six drinks the night before. Yeah. Rest for the next day and a half. And then you're going to miss the sunrise, which would help. Yeah. (laughs) You know, you'll have to sleep past it. Slippery slope. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. So when we can get people really like, on this path of understanding what it feels like to be optimized. I don't think they want to go back to the old way. And that's like you Mm -hmm. said, it's 2022. This is what we need to be doing at this point. Like Mm -hmm. we don't have time to be messing around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I I think uh, not just from like a a health awakening, but from like a spiritual awakening, when you realize all this stuff does come back down to the nervous system with brain health and fascia and water and light. Those are the basic things that need to be, fixed and return to what they should be in order to appreciate, I think, our, our divine potential. And I think that's what's under attack right now. And, and when you see as many people kind of succumbing to it, that's the collective unconscious. What, what's the weight of kind of a fragmented collective consciousness on the rest of us? I think it, it just means that if, if you have your eyes open to some of this stuff, you need to work twice as hard and you know, put out that good energy to help the others around you kind of come up and optimize the nervous system um, because potentially the fate of humanity is, is resting on it. And you look at, you know, Jung and some of these psychologists from the turn of the century, you know, before World War I, who were picking up on kind of this upheaval within the collective, this energy imbalance. Um, I think the same thing is happening today where it's like, you know, when you go further down the quantum rabbit hole, it leads to quantum physics and mechanics and stuff. And you're like, okay, the power of the mind and the power of the collective mind are potentially what are responsible for bringing about reality manifest. So if that's corrupted in any way, if those nervous systems are corrupted, they're not able to electrically transmit information that keeps the whole thing functioning healthily what happens? Things start to get chaotic. Things break down. Exactly what we're seeing now comes to fruition. And, and yeah, the the guys who examined it from kind of a psychoanalytical standpoint, 120 years ago, called out world war one, 20 years before it began seeing some of this stuff. And it's like, well, you know, I can only imagine young would be rolling over in his grave today, seeing what's going on. I agree. I completely agree. It's really fascinating to see how all of that works. And Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, all we can really do is have conversations like this and hope that people listen and hope that people want to, you know, participate in that change and feel their best and be optimized and not Mm -hmm. get sucked into, you know, the matrix, if you will, or just, Mm -hmm. yeah, just allowing yourself to be brainwashed and, eat the food from the grocery store and listen to the news that's on the TV and never go outside and put on your mm-hmm. virtual reality goggles and get lost in that world, you know, cause it's, it makes me sad to think about humanity going that way. It really does. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all about getting your dopamine from natural sources yes. because you know, if, if you're logging onto the computer, checking your portfolio, buying things on Amazon, 
you know, posting controversial things on social media that are getting you likes and feedback, all of those are getting you dopamine. So if you're depriving your natural sources of dopamine and then you're getting it from artificial sources, biologically, your body is building a positive feedback addiction to the technology where you're getting the dopamine. So it's not even, it can be something that's not even conscious, which is, I think what's happening where yeah. you see people uh, attaching to some of these ideologies and things. And you're like, cognitively, this doesn't make sense. I know you, you're a smart person. Can't you see one plus one equals two? Right. Well, if you're throwing essentially their entire uh, endocrine system out of whack, where now all of a sudden they're, they're literally dependent upon artificial sources for things I think you can start to kind of, you know, control people that way and, and oh, definitely. own an ideology. If they learn that they can essentially parrot someone's idea that was on mainstream news and get likes and comments on social, well, then they're going to, and that's the only form of dopamine they're getting. They're going to be able to do that again and again and again and create kind of a feedback loop that promotes that. And by the end of the day, they're brainwashed. So yeah, it's, I think that explains some of the, the cognitive dissonance that we're seeing. Um, and it, it's it's easy for us to be like, no, that's wrong. This is what you need to do. Can't you see this? But that doesn't work. I mean, we've all yeah. tried that. Mm -hmm. So I think something that's really important within the health community right now is not to kind of like push this on people, but lead by example. So yes, you agree. do stuff and then people see it works for you. And then they start asking questions rather than you know, this Preach is about I, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I've tried it that way for years where I'm like, you need to do this and this and this, and please trust me. Like, you yeah, know, it doesn't work. <laughs> no, it doesn't work at all. I mean, I think that's, that's one of the biggest things about social media that I appreciate people who are just kind of, I love success stories. I love hearing about people who got off their meds or who've reversed things like bipolar even, or MS. Like I love hearing stories like that because it's so powerful instead of someone, you know, getting up on their little soapbox and saying, well, this study and this study and this study and that study. And like, well, this is why I'm right because of this study. And it's just like, some people love that. And some people mm -hmm. really fall for it. And they kind of go to this like guru, like this person knows everything. And it's like, but you know what? <laughs> I've worked with so many people that try to do what this guru person says, and it's a disaster. It doesn't work right. because it's mm -hmm. all, it's all based on, you know, straw man type of studies. And so you just have to be careful about who you listen to, where you get your information from, um, in, anywhere, you know, on the news, mm -hmm. social media, any of that stuff, you have to really be careful. The reality with a lot of these studies is they're not healthy people to begin with. No, so you and they're actually, done under blue light in a lab. Yeah. You're under blue light in a lab, not grounded, right. not healthy. And there's, right. you know, 50 different types of metabolisms happening. You know, it's, you can't, you can't measure that. So it's like, and how old are the people? Are they female? Are they men? Or like what? <laughs> it's yeah. like, okay, great. That's a great study, but it was done on five 70 year old men you know, over three days in a lab under blue light. Okay. Yeah. That really doesn't apply to me at all. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's so much like, it may sound complicated what we're talking about when we get into some of the explanations or different supplements or whatever, but it's so, so simple. It's like, get outside. Don't yeah. eat all the time. When you yeah. do eat, make sure it's nutrient dense, go to bed at, at the correct time. That's yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. It's not super complicated at all. It's just getting back to the point where you're kind of coasting. That can be some work if, you know, because yeah. we've all get, we've all been through that and it takes a lot of work sometimes to correct disease or, uh, or metabolic imbalance. Yeah. I mean, everyone's watched me over the last year, all the crazy stuff I did. And I was like cold plunging pretty much every day in November and December and half mm -hmm. of January. People are like, Oh my God, what are you doing? I'm like, <laughs> reverse aging my mitochondria <laughs> <You Exactly. know? laughs> and that I mean that you want to talk about dopamine I mean oh my gosh the cold plunging is so so powerful if you want a dopamine boost it's amazing yeah yeah, yeah. especially if you're going to do that with sauna you know if you oh, push yeah. it to the limits in the sauna to the point where you're like I need to get out of here yeah and then you go in the cold water uh you'll definitely be high for a few minutes oh like, yeah it, it feels a lot like microdosing psilocybin where you have 
that REM electrical activity going on. Um, it's so good for you. That's like, it's the dopamine and it's probably about a 600, 800% increase in that brain drive neurotrophic factor that gives you that alive feeling. And, you know, hitting that and then being able to hit that in meditation and some of these other practices, you know, that's, I think the state that we're supposed to naturally be in, we're supposed to be in this elevated buzzing, arguably high state, Yeah. which, you know, we might get a window into with some yogic practice or meditation Mm -hmm. or plant medicine or whatever, but it's just a window. And it's like, no, I I think we need to be able to see that window and then get ourselves organically back to the point where that's just the state of mind, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And after I, I would I, cold plunge, I would just literally be like singing in the car and like windows down exactly. 20 degrees, just like loving life. And my, everyone's like, the hell is wrong with you? I'm like, yeah. it's just how I feel. I mean, it's just awesome. And people, a lot of people have never experienced that. Yeah. It's, it's theta state. It's theta brainwave. So it's, yeah. I mean, whether it's meditation or mushrooms or, you know, cold plunging, you're getting that seven Hertz theta waves. And that's what the, that's what the kids are in. You're in theta essentially until you've done enough fluoride treatments to put you into alpha and beta. Uh, and yeah. that's the, the state of mind where we're most imaginative, most creative, uh, and where our hearts are actually three times more electromagnetically impactful. So the ability to resonate and unconsciously communicate with one another three times more able to do that when you're in that theta brainwave state so i think everything comes back to the nervous system and it comes back to that state of mind um return uh return to children as they say to access the kingdom of god something along those lines yeah i agree i mean i feel like my daughter is still in theta a lot of the time because she Mm -hmm the stuff that she writes and the things that she expresses on her letter boards and the fact that she can't really speak her senses are dialed up to mm-hmm. a different place. And I'm just like, wow, I never looked at things that way. And sometimes when we go hiking and we're out in the woods, I'll get frustrated. Cause I'm like, all right, let's go. But she just, she's just kind of there just like taking it all in. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I wonder what she is hearing and what she's seeing that I'm not like, I, I feel mm-hmm. like she, because when she writes about it, she says she has synesthesia so she can like you know see colors off of sound and I'm like Mm -hmm. wow just it's she I've learned so much from her and uh it's just fascinating to think about kids and and just the way that they see the world and we're so quick to dismiss them and just put them like away and say no you need to learn more and do but we are the ones who need to be learning from them I agree exactly exactly children are infinitely intelligent yeah absolutely Awesome. Well, I feel like I could probably talk to you for <laughs> like another hour about things, but um, I would love to know where people can find you if they want to, you know, get some of your stuff, your Sheila Jet or the CBD or just follow you on social media. What's a good way to, to do that? Yeah. Uh, my Instagram page is clearly with two Y's, C-L-R-L-Y-Y. Um, I do have the clearly normal, but that's my backup because I do post some controversial stuff. So uh, come and check that out. Uh, yeah, I've got Sheila Jeet. I think that's probably the, the best thing for people to get. If you order Sheila Jeet, I'll toss in the CBD just because I've got tons of them right now. Um, so check me out there. And then clearly.com is the website. Uh, so all my blog posts um, are up there. And I've been working on lately a fictional piece that incorporates everything that I know about circadian biology life lessons philosophy spirituality in a in a fictional adventure uh it's called the hero's journey that's kind of the working title um so check that out uh it's it's kind of like a biopunk thriller that teaches some of these lessons through story cool i love that well i'll make sure i link that in the show notes for everybody and uh, i'll have to definitely check that out myself yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate so much uh, for you hosting me today, Sarah. It was yeah. a good conversation. Yeah. It's been awesome. Thank you. Hopefully we can do it again. Absolutely.